What do you think the odds are that this is clickbait? Well, let's find out. I guess it is clickbait because I clicked on, on guys? it. guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring. God, his intro, <laughs> it's always this. Uh, maybe that's why my channel failed. Maybe I should have had a consistent intro. All of you this evening. So what we're going to be covering in this update video is the AMC Ortex update for the end of the day. The short interest, the utilization, the average days on loan of the shorts, which if you guys watched yesterday's video is very, very important in determining what that danger zone really is. All right. So that's going to say 52% short interest then, I guess. Can't wait to see that. For what the price level that these shorts are really going to feel. Uh, this, this is a lot of qualification. It's a lot of stipulation. Uh, this is very important. I remember yesterday. I said it was very important. No, I don't remember from yesterday. And it's probably not very important. Pressure anyway, on AMC at going forward. Now we're going to take a brief look at the options chain. But the two main important things that we're going to be discussing in this update video is... This situation surrounding the short interest on IWM, the Russell 2000. Now, AMC is the largest component of the Russell 2000 at the current time. And the short... At the current time. The interest on this ETF, it's a very, very big ETF, is upwards of 50% at the current time. We're going to go over exactly... Okay, so the 52% short interest apparently now applies to IWM, not AMC. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is clickbait. 100%. In time, we're going to go over exactly why this is happening, how these shorts are doing this, and this really brings us into the conversation on another way that these over leveraged institutions can create synthetic short interest on AMC without it necessarily popping up on AMC's or texting. Oh my god, it's like clickbait grifter bingo or clickbait grifter mix and match. Let's mix and match high short interest with ETFs. Or let's talk about synthetics with ETFs or synthetics with short interest. I, I mean, come on. How can anybody take this shit seriously, especially with the price having done what it did? I mean, I'm not watching this whole damn video. All right, let's see this damn Ortex up. 81.13. So that was kind of what we were expecting to see out of this utilization increase. Oh, oh, it was what we were expecting to see. Uh, okay. All right. Good. Glad, glad you got that part right. I'm still looking to get it above 85 and 90% because then we can get on our way back up to those really high levels to put the pressure on these lending institutions. 85, 90% so we can get back to those very high levels. High levels of what? Utilization? Yeah, 85, 90% is a high percentage. What are you saying? Jack up the cost to borrow and really put a lot more pressure on... Yeah, because it's 1.09 right now, which is fucking <laughs> bottom of the barrel. Not only the lending institutions, but also the shorts as well. We have an estimated short interest right now on Ortex of 20.71. Ooh, an estimated short interest of 20.71. And the price is this. We did see it crack that 21% mark today, which was a very interesting thing to see because we know that the shorts have really been attacking. And the one thing that we also know, I mean, just looking at the price action um, over the last couple of months, shorts have not covered. We also see the... Oh my God. He's still saying shorts have not covered? I mean, you have to understand. He has been saying this for months. In his mind, shorts have not covered. Meaning, all of the short positions that have ever existed in AMC still exist. I mean, that's what he's saying. Shorts have not covered. The shorts have not covered. Well, I'm sorry. Right here it says 3.53 million returned shares. I'm not going to go through this again. Although, uh, maybe I should. I'm not going to Ortex's website to look at the definitions. Returned shares, according to Ortex, means... The short position was closed. How do you close a short position? You buy to close or you cover. You close the short position. Only then are shares returned. So I don't know his stupid conspiracy theory. These are fake covering or synthetic covering, whatever. No, it's not. These are returned fucking shares. If you're going to rely on the Ortex information for utilization and cost to borrow and all this other crap that has meant absolute jack shit, 
over the last six months that you keep harping on anyway, then why do you just disregard return shares and say shorts haven't covered? It's the most ignorant, asinine shit that you could possibly do. Of course shorts are covering. You don't understand how short positions work. They're not short and hold positions. You don't hold on to a short position. You sell short. If and when the price goes down, you buy to close, cover. You take the profit because that's what this is about. It's about making money. It's not about the hedge funds versus the apes. It's not about Wall Street versus Joe Sixpack. It's about making money. And this this is just totally misses the fucking point. And by saying shorts have not covered, he is causing retail investors to lose money. He is causing individual retail investors to lose money. It's disingenuous. If he does not know that what he is saying is bullshit, then he should not be putting out information. I'm sorry. The shorts have not covered is bullshit. The days to cover spiking up as well at 2.6, meaning that even if the shorts wanted to get out of their positions now, with the current volume that we're seeing on AMC, it's going to be very, very difficult. Why would they all close at once? That's what days to cover means. It's an indication. It's not as if it's an eventuality that would happen. It's a measure of short interest relative to current volume. That's an indication. It's not an eventuality. It's not something that theoretically could happen or will happen necessarily. It's a measure. I mean, it's pretty logical if you think about it, which, which is really concerning, which means that he's never thought about this shit or he has thought about it. And this is, this is the classic dichotomy, uh, the, the classic struggle that I have with these guys, with Short the Vix and, and, and guys like this. Do they know how wrong they are? Do they understand this stuff in reality and they're just presenting it a certain way to make everything seem bullish because it's always bullish no matter what? Or do they actually not know? Is he ignorant or is he a fraud? That's the question. I don't know, but either way, it's wrong and it's misleading and it's causing people, retail investors, to lose money for them to do so without substantially affecting the price to the upside. Now, in addition, when we take... A so yeah, if all the shorts theoretically covered at once, it would affect the price to the upside, but it would never happen because you're going to have short positions exiting at different times based on their entry points and their profit target. So that's also just, it's just ignorant. It's just, it's just looking at it like at face value and not actually thinking about it putting it in context and understanding how professional investing works, how the market works, and what the point is of the fucking market. It's to make money. Also, let me throw one other thing in here. Who's to say that if the shorts all covered tomorrow? Who's to say that there wouldn't be new short positions being added at the same time? They think that all 106 million shares that are sold short are just going to be bought back and that's it and there's going to be zero shares no, <laughs> that's not how it works either. So it's just wrong on so many levels. It's fractally wrong. It's fractally wrong just on so many levels, on every level. The option chain over here on Stonko. All right, I, I, this video is probably getting long, so I'm just going to skip ahead. Fuck Stonko Tracker. I mean, Jesus Christ, use a real platform to do your analysis. You don't even have to have money in your Fidelity account to use Fidelity's tools. I, I don't, I'll never understand why these guys use Weeble and Stonko Tracker, the most amateur fucking shit. And, and at the same time that they use this bullshit, like Weeble, they, they bitch about payment for order flow. And it's like, well, you use a payment for order flow brokerage, uh, po possibly one of the worst payment for order flow brokerage. Oh, but it's not Robinhood. God, these guys are such hypocrites. I'm getting fired up. I, I know. IWM, this is the 52%. Let's see what he's got. Vortex page. It doesn't give us an estimated short interest as a percentage of the free float, but it does give us an estimated amount of shares shorted, 162.77 million at the current time of this recording. We're seeing the utilization at 85%, but the cost of borrows are very low. And that's something that we're going to talk about in just a second. Now, when we come over to short the VIX, I mean, you're just going to glot, you're not even, you're just going to ignore days to cover. You, you made a big fucking deal about it with AMC, but now you apparently it doesn't matter. 
Uh, okay. To this page right here, and we look and see exactly. <laughs> this page. W what is this page? Where is it? What's the URL? I know he didn't put a link to it in the description. I mean, what an amateur. He's an amateur whose audience doesn't care. They don't fucking care. They should, because they've lost. How much money have they lost? I mean, come on. This is exactly what I've been trying to say. This guy has caused people to lose money. When you come over here and look at this page and you look at this video, you see he doesn't even fucking care to give you the links so you could go look it up yourself. What, what the fuck? Exactly um, how many shares make up uh, IWM down here? It's about 311 million. Now, when you divide those shares that have been shorted by that 311 million, you get about 52.5% short interest. That is absolutely insane. Now, AMC does make up the largest percentage um, in terms of the allocation of IWM. So there's already a red flag right there. But why short an ETF in order to get exposure to AMC? Here's how they're doing this. So when we come over to this article right here, we can see hedge fund manager. This has been talked about before, okay? I talked about this on my channel before. Other people talked about it on their channel. Stocktopus talked about it on his fucking channel before. He's talked about it before I did. He's the one that gave me the idea to look into it. I mean, it's like, oh, this is some big scoop and let's use an article from 2017. Uh, right, okay. Jesus fucking Christ. And what is the AMC allocation in IWM anyway? Okay, there's AMC at the top. Weight. Percentage. 0.44%. Weight. Okay. Now, I know this video is long. I'm sorry. But just stick with me for just a bit longer. So here's AMC at the top. And he said, now AMC does make up the largest percentage um, in terms of the allocation of IWM. So there's already a red flag right there. The largest percentage in terms of allocation of the IWM. Okay. So he's right. It is the highest percentage. I've got it in order. I reordered it again, twice, three times. Weight percentage, 0.44%. Now what he's getting wrong or what he seemingly doesn't want to say or something is if you scroll over and you look okay you've got market value notional value those are the same and then you've got shares and then you got you know the id numbers and all that so then it's still on the top amc so this weight right here is based on the market value not the number of shares not the number of shares for example, let's look at the second one here. It's highlighted. So the second one is Southwestern Energy. Energy, equity, 75.2 million, right? You scroll over. So it's still there. Energy, equity, 75.2 million. Weight, 0.11%. Notional value. Uh, let's keep shares, 15.8 million. So here you see this equity has a lower market value, but has more shares. And you see a couple other equities here that have a higher number of shares and a lower market value than AMC. So the fact that half of IWM being shorted, well, for illustrative purposes, just think about that as being 6 million shares of AMC. Now, that's not really the way it works, but there are only 12 million shares in the IWM. So you see what I'm saying? Even if 100% of the AMC shares, and it, that's not how it works because you're shorting an ETF, an ETF is a one product, it's one equity. So it, it, it doesn't work that way. But even if 12 million shares, which is all of the shares that are included in the Russell 2000, that's only 12 million shares. So why is he making such a big fucking deal out of this? Well, I, I don't think he understands. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's going to look at the list. No, then he goes to this stupid Barron's article from four years ago. And I'm just, I'm just scanning through the rest of this. Like, synthetic shorting with ETFs. And then he's talking about China and Hong Kong. So, anyway, I, I understand this video is too long. 
uh, but uh, it's always been a problem to keep the video short, no pun intended. So main takeaways that I want you to leave with. Number one, when people say shorts haven't covered, that indicates that they don't understand how short selling works. And what's really sad is that people who claim to be some kind of expert or information communicator like Short the Vix or Trey Collins or Matt Coors, Wrench Capital, these guys, they say that. So I, I don't know if they don't know or if they are just charlatans, fraudsters, grifters. I think it might be a little bit of both. But when people say the shorts haven't covered, you should be very critical of that. You should question that and go deeper than just, you know, an 11-minute video by some college kid. Number two, number two, how useful is Ortex, really? How useful is it? I would venture to say not very useful. Not very useful. It's not telling you anything that's useful. It's not. Because you've relied on this. These guys and everybody has been conditioned classically to rely on ortex information and it has gotten them it has made them lose money and that brings me to the third and final takeaway from this video short the vix and other youtube amc grifter charlatans are causing people to lose money they are causing people to lose money people have lost money because of short the vix and trey and matt and wrench capital and all of these guys they don't care all they care about is their channel, their revenue, their profit from all of their different revenue streams. Short the VIX's fucking hoodies. That's wrong because they are misleading people. They're causing people to lose money. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If this is your first time watching one of my videos or if you're an old subscriber or if you're a new subscriber, I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Join the finance chat if you want to chat with me. Leave a comment. I'm trying to get better about replying to comments. And I'm adding videos as much as I can. This weekend I'm going to be putting up some of my old content that was removed. I uh, managed to recover some of that. So I'm going to put up some of the you know videos that I did before a few months back. So that'll be fun. But other than that, that's about all I got tonight. Have a good one. Catch you later.